Binge watch and learn on TRS Clips. What was Dr. Kalam like as a teammate and a guy? Beyond his professional achievements, also an attached question is why did he become Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam? No, but Kalam was not alive when he saw the rocketry. No, no, I'm saying you worked with him. Yeah, yeah. You were his teammate. Yes, yes. When you work with someone, you get to know a lot more about them than the world knows. That's my question to you. How was he? Uh, can, I think you should make this question a little more clear. If you've, we've met today. Yeah. We've spoken. Yeah, you've yeah. You've gotten to know me a little bit. Yeah, much about it. Yeah. Okay. My, me, my yeah. heart. You got to work for such a long duration with him. Yes. My question is, what did you get to learn about him? Yeah, actually, I can give you a typical example that he had. He, first of all, he's a very, uh, very good person. Nice person, very good person. Absolute inch by inch, he's a gentleman. This is number one. Number two, he had a foresight, which is unbelievable. I can tell you one example, which, which will explain to you uh, more about Kalam. I'm, I'm thankful to you that you asked this question. You see, in the year 1967, I remember that. That is about approximately 33 plus 60, 56 years back. Okay. Kalam and myself, we were together in the, what do you call, the payload integration group. We, we never had a defined job other than the payload to be integrated with the rockets. The payload will come once in a blue moon. And then other times we had no job, honestly. So we wanted to do some job and then we found out uh, various jobs, which includes the D2 rocket, which is a three inch diameter rocket. Now today we have a three meter diameter rocket. Okay, then liquids, absolutely no question about it. Nobody knows what is liquids. So he immediately came with an idea that who knows, tomorrow we will be making very big rockets. Now these rockets are to be recovered. He didn't say payload. He said, the rock rockets may have to be recovered for reuse. So why not we do some experiment on that? <laughs> None of us. He said, we don't have a rocket for, for us to recover. Even a three-inch rocket, it goes and it dances. It's uh, nothing big about it. But then he designed with, of course, myself and uh, we, uh, Mr. Sudhakar, Mr. C.R. Satya and Mr. M.K. Abdul Majid. These are the four or five persons we were together. We designed a system. The system is uh, a canister which will resemble a rocket body. It's one foot diameter and about uh, two feet long. In that canister, we had a parachute and a float and a cable which is uh, tying around the parachute and a cable cutter in that. And there is a lid and then the lid has to be opened with that. So there is a pressure cartridge. All those things were packed. Now this packing, we don't have a rocket to take it to that height. Idea was to drop it from a height, receive it at the Arabian Ocean, like what we did in the Gaganyan. So we took it by an aircraft. That aircraft is nothing other than Pushpak aircraft, which is a two-seater. This belongs to a flying club. In that Sudhakar was the second uh, uh, fellow and the first fellow is Dr. Krishnan. He was a pilot. I remember very well all those things. Then he took off. At that altitude, he dropped the canister from there. There is a timer integrated into the canister. The moment you release the timer, the timer will start working. So at uh, five seconds or so, the timer initiated the lid. The lid was blasted off. Then the entire uh, parachute tied up, all came out. Then after 10 the second, the cable cutter was initiated. The cable which was tying around the parachute was cut off. Then the parachute got deployed and the entire parachute was coming slowly, landing on the Arabian Ocean. Arabian Sea, of course. And then there was a float which comes around and then... Then, of course, there was not a Navy ship awaiting this. There was a boat, a fisherman's boat, went and picked up this. 
This all experiment took place in the year 1967. Now, you tell me what was his foresight. What he did at that time became a reality after 53 years. So, I am saying that will explain to you who is Kalam to you. Hmm. Okay. Very futuristic. Very, very futuristic. Very, very futuristic. And he's a great, great person. What was he like to just chill with? <laughs> he doesn't drink beer anyway. To chill with means, you know, one another joke is that he called me one day and then said, Nambi, tomorrow onwards we are going to become wet. You know, wet means that uh, the beer shops and then uh, liquor shops are all going to be opened. I also thought, okay, this man is going to drink or something. Then I thought, yes, Kalam, tomorrow the Kerala state becomes wet. That means prohibition is lifted. Then next day and two days afterwards, I asked Kalam, don't you think that you have to? <laughs> he said, who will go? I never go nearer to that. So he, but the one thing is that he will crack a joke and he will never, not even smile. He will keep walking. <laughs> now you have to understand and then you have to smile. So he's, he's a good fellow to work with, nice chap. And he's the first person, when I conducted the test in France, 1985, December 12th, I remember the date, he congratulated me. Yeah, because he was not very hopeful of the liquid system at that time. So he called me and then said, congratulations, you have done it. That scene is there in the movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Same thing. So that explained to you who is Kalam. Okay. What was going on in his mind most of the time according to you? You know, after he became president, his problems were uh, generally not away from space-related matters. Once he was out of space, he went to DRDO. Then he became the, what do you call, advisor to the defense ministry and then to the prime minister, then became the president. And he was all the, all, all the time occupied on issues which are unrelatable to space-related matters. Once he was talking about uh, I was there in, in, in his company. He was telling that these borders of Sri Lanka fisherman boat and our fisherman boat, why not we find a mechanism by which you cross the border, then you must have a signal telling you that you are crossing the border, some kind of a thing. Like that he, he used to, see, global methods, see, what I'm sure bothered him is that the fight between these two fishermen all the time, and then he is worried about <laughs> my fish. No, my fish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's basically what it is. Yeah, so always problem solving. Actually, the speaking, the the most interesting thing is the fishermen alone fight with each other mm. because, unfortunately, unfortunately, that area you get a lot of fish. It yeah. appears. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, what I am sensing from what you're saying about him is that he was always a thinker and a student of science, like for a very long time, even in his political career. Yeah, yeah. Are you he was never a political person. Mm. According to me, he was never a political person. Was he happy in politics? I don't think so. Ooh. I don't think that he was a... In fact, he he, he is not comfortable with... Uh, he, have you quoted any political decision made by him? I don't think so. I don't think any... Is there any political decision made by him as president or... Not that, not that I remember. Plus, I was too young when he was <laughs> the president. Actually, I I don't know. At least I think that he is unfit to be a uh, political person. Okay. Why did he take on that political role then? He thought that things which he couldn't do as a space engineer, he could do there as... Uh, in fact, he was telling me in an indirect language, uh, finds it a little uncomfortable because he is not free to move around. He is not free to go around, things like that. <laughs> he was jokingly telling... Who will uh, take on me? There is so much of security around me, I feel uncomfortable. <laughs> like mm. that he was there. So he was in politics to basically enable things for the world of Indian science. Uh, honestly, I don't know whether you are right in using the word politics with respect to him because as a president, is it necessary that he should be a politician? I think you're in that general domain of being around yeah, politicians. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. I'm just asking this question, yeah. Again, I don't know myself as well, but that's what I assume, sir. That's how Delhi works generally. Yeah. You know, everyone's in that same Lutyens area. Possibly, You're yeah, meeting possibly. like the other politicians. That energy is rubbing off. Yeah, you. but I think he was not a politician. According to me, according to me, he was not a politician. But 
he is a fair uh, person he won't join the ruling party or the non ruling party or something if at all if he has decided something it will be in the interest of the nation yeah that's all he will do that's how he's remembered yeah like so many of these guys who are gen z's you know born after 2000 i don't think they were old enough to even remember him being the president but we've heard about apj abdul kalam Actually, there are so many things we were we were thinking about it for example you work there in the office for more than 3 days continuously after all you know you don't have a guest house you don't have anything you have to sleep on the table you have to sleep on the beach <laughs> and then after third or fourth day you say i kalam i want to go home and then come back tomorrow or after an hour or two then he will look at you as if some sky has fallen down he will look at you like this very sad okay if you want to go you go after that answer you will never feel like going <laughs> <laughs> god passion for the work passion for the work yes, okay. yes. So TRS Clips has all sorts of videos and all sorts of playlists. Make sure you explore the channel by subscribing and heading to our homepage and reading through all the playlists.